so and welcome here in our studio in Serekunda. This is Star TV News with me, May Manager Fadera. In the headlines tonight, President Barrow gives food relief package to 84% of Gambian households. A native of North Bank region dedicates his time fighting COVID-19. 300 Gambian students in Cyprus pleads for repatriation on the international scene. Saudi-led coalition rejects South Yemen self-rule declaration. Ecuador, woman lands, sister is alive after cremated rock body. Spanish children allow outside for first time in six weeks. Well, those were the headlines and now the news in details. President Adam Abaro on Sunday launched the food relief package, giving 230,000 bags of rice, bags of sugar, and 148,000 gallons of refined cooking oil to 84% of the country's vulnerable society. The items will be distributed across the country through the governor's chiefs and the village head, Alkalu. The president has also announced at a ceremony in Banjul that the government has decided to defer the tax returns for businesses in the first quarter of 2019. Omar Job was at the luncheon and he now reports. Speaking at the luncheon in Banjul, the presidency of 84% of vulnerable households in the Gambia will benefit from the food item and his government sees it as timely to support in this global crisis of pandemic. The move is indeed timely as the vehicles will support the health facilities across the nation, especially if the COVID-19 cases escalate here. In a global pandemic, such as what we are witnessing, every country must look inward to protect and provide for its people. Therefore, it is equally timely that 2,000 tons of fertilizer are available to support farmers in the upcoming rainy season and further strengthen our drive for food security. I urge all able-bodied persons, particularly youth, to redirect their energies into agriculture, be it to cultivate our staple foods or horticulture production. Together, let us make agribusiness a reality. President Barrow lamented that his government deemed it necessary to come to the aid of its people as most of the people in the country and daily to sustain their families and by asking those people to stay at home without supporting them it will be hard for them and he get a sort of the availability of food items from the ministry of trade to uphold these principles and guarantee financial discipline and management of the resources available for the pandemic a single government account have been opened to cater for rapid one-stop financial transactions. Also, distribution and monitoring mechanisms have been put in place involving the relevant institutions and local government authorities. Distribution points have been identified and vouchers will be used to reach the household beneficiaries with the government food support. A donation committee has already been set up to coordinate all donations regarding COVID-19. And a national response coordinator has been identified. This decision is meant to expedite efficient and effective processing in the management and provision of socioeconomic support while keeping the public informed and updated on such processes. In partnership with the security agents, the health, response teams, the health response teams and communities along our borders have step of surveillance at both official and unofficial entry points. He further urged all able people, especially youth, to engage in farming so agriculture can be reality as 2,000 tons of fertilizers are available for farmers in the upcoming rainy season. He further urged people to continue adhering to the health authorities' preventive measures in order to cope the pandemic, coronavirus, and thank the religious leaders, Gambians and non-Gambians residing in the country for supporting government emergency measures despite difficulty to congregate. 
President Barrow added that distribution and monitoring mechanism has been put in place involving relevant institutions and local government authorities, adding that distribution points have been identified and vouchers will be used to reach the household's beneficiaries with the government food support. The ceremony was held at Makati Square in Banjul and was also attended by cabinet members and other top government officials. For Star TV, I am Omar Jub. Star TV takes a look at how a young environmentalist in North Bank region devotes his time and resource in combating the novel coronavirus by sensitizing communities within the Barrafield Terminal on the means of preventing the pandemic and on keeping the environment clean. Modu El Baji files in this report. Many developing countries have been listed among the cleanest countries in the globe due to the devotion its compatriots have for their nation and the willingness to take any action meant for the betterment of their motherland. Omar Jalo, known as Oja, is a native of Bara. He revealed that the love he has for this country is what motivated him to play his role in fighting the pandemic by enlightening the people about the coronavirus in order for them to adhere to the preventive measures. Mr. Jalo further indicated that all he does is to urge the commuters to be observing social distancing, to be washing their hands, and to avoid handshaking. Waste management is also another issue he is concerned about. Omar Jalo, who have been in these activities since 2013, revealed that he has reached out to the president for help but that does not yield dividend. He later took the illegal journey to Europe but due to some challenges, he returned home and continued being an environmentalist. With the use of his motorbike, Mr. Jalo collects waste as early as 7 o'clock within Barra and he spent the rest of his day enlightening the people about the COVID-19. He alleged that either the Barra Area Council nor the port authorities recognizes his efforts much more to help him. And he is a father of three children. He further appealed for help in any form. Reporting for Star TV, I am Modi El Baji. An estimated 300 Gambian students who are still stranded in North Cyprus pleads government for repatriation amid the coronavirus. The students said they want to return home but government has not done anything much to help. Speaking to our reporter, a Gambian student in Cyprus said they have been expecting government to inquire and know about their conditions and to possibly repatriate them but none of this has happened yet. Well, that a champ files in this report. Zainab Kanafa, a master's student at the Eastern Mediterranean University in Famagosta, not Cyprus, said things are very hard for them. She said there are about 300 Gambian students in North Cyprus, all living in different cities. We do not stay together with the country on lockdown and parcel curfew. It is difficult for most students to get their essential needs due to financial issues. She stressed that, to get money is even harder since both MoneyGram and Western Union closed before they received money, sent by family members. I had to wait six days before being able to pull my money, she said. On the part of the government, Zainab noted, it came to my attention that the Gambian government does not have our data, but we haven't heard from them since. Whenever other embassies, including the Nigerian embassy, has declared that it will return her students, we the Gambian students are left in the state. The Gambia does not have an embassy or a consulate, not Cyprus. And according to Zainab, not Cyprus Prime Minister, saw this pandemic as a chance to clean Africans in their country, a statement he said on a state television. Landlords are not waiting on students. Even though the Gambia has no embassy in Cyprus, she said the state have already begun repatriating their students. Of course, those that want to return home have sent their data to their embassies. Unfortunately, the Gambian students are left in shade. As a Gambian citizen, I am demanding an answer from our beloved government and I hope and wish they will take us into consideration. She stressed. Reporting for Star TV News, I am Dado Chan. The members of Ibo Town Badala Development Association on Sunday assisted a member to maintenance his residence so as to sustain his compound, which is next to the river in a very unhygienic environment. Binta Kuli files in this report. As the world is engaged in the fight against the pandemic, a native of Ibo Town, Mr. Mamat Mbai, and his family are not in the mood of COVID-19, but instead wanting to live in a hygienic environment. Speaking to Star TV, Mr. Mamat Mbai, who is struggling with health condition, said 
He worked as a prison officer for 13 years, then shifted to a KMC municipal police for seven years. Mr. Mamad highlighted that before he felt sick, he never begged for any support, but now that he can't do anything on his own, people support him when he needs anything. He further praised the effort of the association for coming to his aid to maintain his house as it will go a long way before the house will break. I am from same mom and dad with Muhammad's father and I am the last born of the family. I thank and praise Allah. In Ibo town here, there are good people. The association comprises of our own children. They came here to surprise Muhammad with this great gesture. Muhammad is very disciplined. And he is the firstborn of the family, and he also cares about relatives. The reason he is in this situation is because he is sick, and the family is dull income-wise. Mustafa Cham, the Secretary General of the Association, said, The aim and objective of the Association is to stand for the people of Ibo town, and that they deem it necessary to help Mr. Mbai and his family, as they feel difficulties in the rainy season. We want to see here anyone residing in Ibo town to be helped. That's the motive of the association. Before the maintenance was done by the association, if you stand behind the house, you will see inside the house through the cracks of the building. But with the idea of our elders, they brought a trip of sand and 15 bags of cement. So for us, we told to ourselves, as the association is set to help, so we said we will do the labor work so he will not suffer in the rainy season as it used to be. Because the way the building was, you saw it. No one will thought that there will be someone staying in here. And you can see we have fixed all the cracks on the wall and inside the house so they can live there. And we are pleading to those who can help to come to their aids before the rainy season to help him with his family. For Star TV News, I am Binta Kweli. And now the news beyond our borders. The Saudi-led coalition in Yemen is calling for an end to violence after southern separatists in the city of Aden declare self-rule. The Southern Transitional Council, which the UAE backs, is seeking a return to independence and is accusing the government of mismanagement. But Saudi Arabia is calling for all sides to abide by a power-sharing agreement signed five months ago. Al Jazeera's Dosa Jabari reports. The internationally recognized government in Yemen is calling it a coup after the Southern Transitional Council announced it was in control of the port city of Aden. The council accuses the government of being unable to cope with the coronavirus pandemic and failing to improve the lives of Yemenis. So far, there has been only one confirmed COVID-19 infection in the southern region of Hadramaut. This is actually a pileup of um, uh, mismanagement, uh, misgovernance, in, especially in South Yemen. So that's why the SDC is right now uh, compelled to take, uh, to take action to their own hands while still calling for a ceasefire, calling for uh, de-escalation in all fronts. We want things to go smoothly. We want, things, we want uh, to be able to deliver aid, services. We want to be able to battle this pandemic. But the government warns the breakaway attempt could have catastrophic consequences describing it as a resumption of an armed insurgency. It's yet another complicating factor in Yemen's five-year civil war, which has been marked by shifting, sometimes shadowy, allegiances. The southern separatists are backed by the United Arab Emirates and have been nominal allies of the Saudi Emirati coalition in their war against the Houthis. The government says the separatist action is a rejection of a power-sharing deal brokered to end last year's unrest, which Saudi Arabia hailed as a step towards a wider political solution to the war. There are thought to be at least 25 regional separatist groups. Support on the ground is also in question. Critics say control shouldn't be taken by force. Factions within Yemen, and, and Yemen could split not into three, but four different uh, 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 regions or areas. And I think this is like a premature uh, cessation that has, doesn't have uh, the public support in other areas of Yemen, especially in Mahra and, 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 and other places. So basically, we're, they're playing with fire at the moment. And I think that is, you know, it's, it's bound to come, to come back to haunt them. 
The Southern Transitional Council says it continues to support the unilateral ceasefire declared by Saudi Arabia two and a half weeks ago. It has been just extended by a month. But its declaration of autonomy and state of emergency adds to the uncertainty for Yemenis who've already suffered years of hunger and war. Dorsa Jabari, Al Jazeera. Spain has recorded its lowest daily death toll from COVID-19 in more than a month from Sunday as part of plans to ease restrictions on the public. Children under the age of 14 have been allowed to go out for one hour a day. Al Jazeera's Namni Baba reports. It's been six long weeks stuck inside for six-year-old Marco and his parents in their apartment in central Madrid, and it's been hard for all of them. The kid of his age needs some physical activity, and the, the lack of that, that, those activities outside is uh, affecting him somehow. He's more nervous and uh, difficult to manage sometimes. Since the lockdown came in, adults have been allowed to go out for essential reasons, but children haven't, so Sunday was a big day for Marco. The new rules apply to children up to the age of 13 only. Each adult is allowed to go out with up to three children for one hour and no further than one kilometre from their home. They still have to observe distancing, as this drone reminds people meaning they can't meet up with their friends, and parks remain closed in most places. But specialists have warned of the effect of the lockdown on children's health and mental well-being. And this nine-year-old has certainly missed just getting out. The streets, I miss the streets and the park and feeling the air on my face. And I never thought I would miss school, but I really do. Spain has the world's third highest official coronavirus death toll, but with the number of daily deaths falling, the government's hoping to ease restrictions further from next weekend. I would like to announce that if the evolution of the pandemic continues in a positive direction, as it is doing so far, starting from May 2nd, people will be allowed to go out for individual physical activity and walks with the people with whom they live, however always in the conditions laid down by the health authorities. <laughs> In the southern city of Seville, the annual fair isn't happening, but that hasn't stopped them celebrating. With people dancing traditional Sevillanas on their balconies and generally enjoying the chance to let their hair down. The city council may hold the event in September as part of a plan to recover the tourism industry. But right now, there's a cautious optimism in Spain as people take stock of how many lives the crisis has already taken. Nadine Barber, Al Jazeera. Health workers in Ecuador have apologized for telling a woman her sister had died of the coronavirus, only to find out she was alive and recovering in a hospital. Ecuador's number of confirmed cases has almost doubled over just two days, and the strain on the health system has begun to show in disturbing ways. Al Jazeera's Lucia Newman reports. This is 74-year-old Albita Maruri. Three weeks ago, she was supposedly cremated after reportedly dying in hospital from coronavirus. But now, her family's been informed she's still very much alive and that they have the wrong ashes. This isn't the first case of mistaken identity in Ecuador's chaotic COVID-19 epicenter of Guayaquil. Nationwide, the number of confirmed cases has doubled. This is not because the cases appeared overnight, but because all the backlog tests were processed and reported yesterday. In Ecuador, no one can really say how many people have died from COVID-19. Only that people are dying faster than they can be properly tested and identified. A nurse who doesn't want to be named says that in his hospital in Guayaquil, he's had to pile up bodies in the bathrooms because there's no more room elsewhere. That's very traumatic for us. Imagine, I have nightmares. I'm not very well psychologically. We can't do more for a critical patient than give them saline solution, when what they need is a ventilator. In Brazil, it's a similar case. This is the Nossa Senhora Aparecida Cemetery in Manaus, the gateway to the Brazilian Amazon. Even some of the gravediggers have died after contracting the virus in the desperate race to bury victims. 
Luigi Paolo just lost his mother-in-law, whom he says could not access emergency care. A person who needed to be in an intensive care unit was in a basic hospital bed where they didn't even have x-rays. It's a horrible film. I never expected to see this in my life. Hospitals are reaching their capacity even before the expected peak of the pandemic. Malaria and yellow fever are already widespread in this region, where communities along the Amazon River are days away from the nearest hospital. Now, Manaus has the highest mortality rate from COVID-19 in all of Brazil, a sanitary emergency that's become a calamity. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera. Well, before we end the news, I recover our main headlines. President Barrow gives food relief packages to 84% of Gambian households. A native of North Bank region dedicates his time fighting COVID-19. 300 Gambian students in Cyprus pleads for repatriation. Saudi-led coalition rejects South Yemen self-rule declaration. Ecuador woman lands sister is alive after cremating wrong body. Spanish children allow outside for first time in six weeks. Well, that's all for this edition of the news. Please enjoy the rest of our programs and join us tomorrow for more news. Thanks for watching.